a lot to do today, and we thank you for being here. We'll try to keep this, this brief because I know you're busy. Um, last week, Mason Dixon conducted a poll on behalf of the Family Foundation regarding several of our legislative priorities for 2012. Not surprisingly, a majority of Virginians indicated support for these items, in some cases by very wide margins. One of our top priorities for 2012 is the scholarship tax credit bills patroned by Senator Mark Obenchain and Delegate Jimmy Massey, legislation that is a priority for the governor as well. This proposal received the highest support of anything on our agenda, with 71% of Virginians in favor. This support crosses all demographics, including political party, race, region, and sex, and went as high as 81% in the Southwest Roanoke region. This is not surprising since a similar poll conducted on our behalf in late 2008 showed almost identical support. Virginians want education freedom, and we're confident that this year we will see a break breakthrough. Another education item on our agenda that received overwhelming support is allowing homeschool students to try out for sports teams in public schools that they would otherwise attend. This proposal is supported by 69% of Virginians who understand that homeschooled families pay taxes, are members of the community, and that these kids should have the same opportunity as every other student. Delegate Rob Bell is patroning this legislation. Both of these issues show that overwhelming majority of Virginians understand that private and homeschooled families are an important part of our community. Another priority is legislation that will require an ultrasound 24 hours prior to an abortion with the woman seeking the abortion being offered the opportunity to view this image of her unborn child. This proposal is supported by 54% of Virginians. Most interestingly is the cross tab on, on sex. While 50% of men support the idea, 57% of women support it, favoring the legislation, indicating that it is, a, it is women in Virginia who strongly favor updating our informed consent law to be consistent with the modern technology that we have at our disposal these days. Nearly 20 states have passed similar type ultrasound legislation in the past decade. Senator Jill Vogel and Delegate Kathy Byron, among others, are carrying this legislation this year. Virginians also showed strong support for faith-based child placement agencies. When asked if these groups should be forced to violate their faith principles regarding family or, lose, or face losing state support, 54% of Virginians said no. Again, support for these agencies crosses demographic lines. This year, we are asking the General Assembly to ensure that these important organizations be protected from future attempts at forcing them to violate their faith with legislation sponsored by Senator Jeff McWaters and Delegate Todd Gilbert. Another new proposal found support as well. In the past two years, six states have passed legislation that prohibits abortion after the time that science finds unborn children can feel pain, generally regarded as 20 weeks. Our poll found that 51% of Virginians support this brand new proposal. Senator Mark Obenchain and Delegate Rich Anderson are carrying the Pain Capable Unborn Child Act. Finally, Virginians now oppose taxpayer funding of failed embryonic stem cell research, 51 to 36%. Please get that right, embryonic stem cell research. The number has grown from 43% in the poll that we had taken in 2008 for this failed unethical research. And as it becomes more public and researchers start to admit that it's time to move on. In fact, in December, the scientist that led the team that, produ that produced Dolly the sheep said to a group of researchers that embryonic stem cell research is a thing of the past. It is time that the General Assembly catches up with the scientific community and prohibits failed embryonic stem cell research in Virginia. Delegate Ben Klein has introduced legislation that would do just that. That's a quick rundown of the polling which you have. We believe these poll numbers are important because they verify the Virginians that sent more conservatives to Richmond this year, leading to a supermajority in the House and a majority in the State Senate knew exactly what they were doing and have expectations that these and other values issues will be successful. Opinion matters, but opinion that drives behavior matters more. These opinions drove Virginians to the polls to vote for conservatives. Thank you, and we'll, we'll now uh, turn it over to a couple of our patrons to speak on their bills, and then we'll open it up for questions. Ladies first. Well, good morning, everyone. I'm very pleased to be here with the Family Foundation and thank them for their role um, in strengthening families in the Commonwealth of Virginia and um, to the families that have joined us today. 
um, my bill that I'm carrying in the House is a bill that I've carried before that would add as a part of informed consent the um, requirement that a ultrasound be done prior to an abortion. I believe this is a common, common sense measure as a woman myself. The informed consent law is not truly informed without using information that is readily available to us today. Technology has um, as advanced even more and continues to each year and, and ultrasounds are easily and readily available to ensure that the health of the woman is protected and that we have an accurate determination of specifically um, what the gestational age is and other matters related to the woman's health. So I'm excited about going forward with this bill and, and thank you for being here. Good afternoon. I'm here to talk about the homeschooling bill, what's now being called the TiVo bill. And the, <laughs> the issue is, is that parents choose to homeschool their children for all sorts of reasons. And we have a set of rules in place where Virginia qualifies those students. We say you're, you're performing at an ability level that's sufficient. But those kids cannot try out the local sports team. And this bill would allow them to try out. There's no reserved places on the team. They've got to try out like anybody else. But if they're complying with Virginia's rules for making academic progress as a homeschooler, we're going to let them try out the local high school team. I'm Delegate Jimmy Massey, and I'm carrying the uh, Educational Improvement Scholarships Bill. Um, look, we, we have wonderful public schools in the state of Virginia. We are the fourth best state in which to raise a child. But there are 1.2 million children in Virginia's public schools. And does anybody really think that that one-size-fits-all box is the right thing for all 1.2 million? So what we're trying to do, and what the governor has been a big choice of, from charter schools, virtual schools, laboratory schools, uh, and now this uh, uh, educational improvement scholarships, is we want to give parents choices. I mean, who's in the best place to decide what's in the best interest, educational interest of a child? Should it be decided by their parents or their zip code? And guess what? We're not reinventing the wheel here. Uh, this program has been in place in Florida for 10 years. It, it passed in 2001 with the support of one Democrat. Ten years later, there are now 40,000 kids in Florida going, to, uh, going on educational improvement scholarships, about 1% of their population, of their school population down there. Those families make $26,000 a year, and the program has been studied ad nauseum in, in Florida, and it's been proven to do three things. It helps the children, saves the state millions of dollars, and I, oh, guess what? Competition actually improved the public schools. So that's what we want to do so, here in Virginia, and we're not reinventing the wheel. We want right. to provide parents with choices. So uh, that's what we're, and with the new dynamic down the hall in the Senate, we're very optimistic that we're going to be able to do just oh, that this year. Ben, you have a bill? Yeah. I do, and uh, uh, I have the bill to uh, ban embryonic stem, stem cell research in Virginia. Um, and I believe that polling came back pretty favorably uh, that the Commonwealth, uh, citizens of the Commonwealth do not want their tax dollars uh, used for uh, these, for the creation of life in order to, uh, in order to destroy it. They, uh, common, the citizens of the Commonwealth um, overwhelmingly support life and efforts to uh, preserve and protect it. And this practice, uh, which has been unproven uh, in, in past tests to result in any kind of uh, positive results, um, uh, has no place in the Commonwealth. So I hope that the bill receives a fair hearing in the Rules Committee and uh, look forward to continuing to add co-sponsors uh, as we push for its support and, uh, and for its passage. We'll open it up to some questions, either myself or any of the patrons of the bills. And Marie. For Delegate Massey. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. What is the means test? What, what children would qualify for these scholarships? Well, I'll tell you what, if you made Jimmy Massey a benevolent dictator, he would say everybody could give and everybody could receive. But uh, as Victoria and I talked about, I can't get that bill through the House and the Senate. So uh, my bill in the House has free and reduced lunch children in it. Uh, uh, Senator Obencheney's bill is a little bit broader. 
and so uh, over the Senate. So I, I think we're going to, you know, a free and reduced lunch is about 180% of poverty, which is about $22,000 a year. Poverty is about $22,000. Um, so I think we're going to end up, you know, somewhere between 180 and 250 at the end of the day. And then we're also going to add, uh, I think, add families with children with disabilities, and we're actually going to increase the income limit. I'm hopeful for those for those families, maybe another 50 basis points or 100 basis points on top of it. So that's where we're headed. Yes. Uh, there was a piece of legislation that you didn't talk about today, but I'm wondering if it's a priority. Um, Delegate Byron just got out of committee. The um, a bill that would end the HPV vaccination mandate. What are the Family Foundation's thoughts on that piece of legislation? Is that something that you would like to see the General Assembly pass? Sure, we do support that legislation, but you know, we were just here today to talk about the things that we pulled, which were our, our top priorities. Um, and, and there's been some suggestions that the vaccine causes mental retardation. I'm not gonna comment on the science of the vaccine. I'm gonna simply say that our support is out of the fact that we believe um, ultimately, that, that this is uh, a parent's decision on whether to vaccinate their child. Would you care to comment on that? I, I said the same thing in committee, that I'm not a doctor, which is why we should not be mandating things that we don't have the, um, have the education to make those decisions and keep up with the ongoing um, science that comes out. Uh, the parents need to do that with their doctors. Thank you. Other questions? Well, thanks so much for being here. And if you have any questions, we're hanging out for a minute or two. Feel free to grab us. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.